The first holiday that I organized for HF Holidays was way back in 1995. It was at St. Ives in Cornwall when digital photography was still in its infancy. Now, this selection of images go back to 2002. Therefore, some images may not reflect the technical excellence that we expect today, but are included because of their artistic merit. Because of its unique light, courtesy of its location by the sea, St. Ives has had an artist colony for well over 100 years. But it gets very busy in season. But it has an excellent base for touring the area. The Penwith Peninsula is a granite headland projecting into the Atlantic Ocean, the tip of Cornwall, and includes Land's End and the fishing village of Mousel. The entire tour can be followed on Ordnance Survey Land Ranger map number 203 or for more detail, Explorer 102, 102, especially useful when walking. Now start by taking the B road, the B3306, out of St. Ives. It goes towards Zena and St. Just. The road is not very straight, and although it keeps a respectable distance from the cliffs, it is as winding and tortuous as the heavily indented coastline that it follows. This can be safely appreciated and photographed by stopping off at Zena and then walking the unclassified road towards the sea for views of Gernard's Head. Now on the way, pop into the local church and learn about the tragic love between a man and a mermaid. Just a local legend, of course. It is not hard to imagine that legends abound on this Cornish peninsula, part of an ancient land known as Kerno, a name relating to its Celtic identity. Evidence of these prehistoric times are to be seen at Lanyon Coit, Merry Maiden's Stone Circle and Menantol. Originally forming the entrance to a chambered tomb, its mythical powers were believed as late as the 20th century, when young children were passed naked through the hole nine times as a cure for certain diseases. Tin mining was active for many years, but now no longer extracted. The shafts extended well under the sea, and the preserved engine houses serve as a reminder of this former industry, when conditions were very harsh and only the strongest survived. At Botalloch, an unclassified road leading to a rough lane gives access to the crowns, where the engine houses perch precariously on the cliff edge. A path permits closer access. The most westerly tin mine active in the 1870s is at Cape Cornwall, its tall chimney a conspicuous landmark. It can be accessed from St. Just on a minor road to a car park near the Cape. A cape marks the point where the seas divide. Here, the Atlantic Ocean, where some waters flow north up the Bristol Channel, the rest up the English Channel. It is one of only two capes in Britain, the other being Cape Roth in Scotland. However, it might be claimed that Land's End, our next destination, being the accurate westerly point, is the true Cape. But the name has remained with this peninsula. Now tell me, the rocks over there, does it look like Charles de Gaulle lying on his back? When taking the main road, the A30, out of Penzance to Land's End, there is a charge if you wish to enter the theme park and for cliff views. A public 
footpath that is part of the 630 mile southwest coast path passes Land's End and is free to use. But don't worry, we are only walking a mile. I usually park at nearby Senon Cove and walk the final mile to the headland with the bonus of spectacular scenery, a route I have taken on several occasions. Now on one trip a helicopter suddenly appeared over the horizon and hovered nearby and someone was lowered. Fortunately it was only an exercise. So I exercised my moving button finger. The southern route to Penzance includes Pothkerno with its Minac Theatre and La Mona Cove, but first Mausel is reached, a fishing port before the development of Newlyn. Photographically, it is picture perfect, offering many opportunities from chocolate box to those that are artistically more challenging. The port was described by Dylan Thomas as the loveliest village in England. We have arrived at the wide expanse of Mounts Bay, stretching from the Penwith Peninsula to the Lizard, worthy of a separate exploration. Its centrepiece is St Michael's Mount. Drive through Penzance and take the A30 out of town, branching onto the A394 for Marazan for access to the mount. Whilst a boat can be taken across the channel, it is more interesting to wait for low tide and walk via the causeway. Access to the island is free, excluding of course if you arrive by boat but there is a charge for non-National Trust members if you want to go into the castle. For St Ives, return to the A30 and take the A3074 at St Earth with the option to visit Leyland and Carbis Bay.